This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043. Welcome back. This is Jonathan Clark here on Q104.3's Out of the Box. We are joined in the studio with the one, the only, the legendary Gary Clark Jr. Ooh, How are you, man? Ooh, I'm good. Legendary. Okay. Yes, yeah. You are legendary status <laughs> as as we speak. Oh, uh, yeah. The new album, it's called This Land, mm-hmm. and you're playing the Beacon Theater for three shows, March 21, 22, and 23, and a bunch of other shows all around the country and probably the world. All the tour dates, GaryClarkJr.com. Congrats on making a smoking new album man thank you you you. and your team played us a bunch of tracks at electric lady right yeah that was like a few months ago that's right it was it was nice to hear it on that sound system it sounded good in there yeah we we had it bumping especially for y'all in there yeah so did you do anything at electric lady for the album or just that was the playback sort of thing there or no i didn't do anything for the album i've done some stuff there um before i was uh buddy guys album up there yeah yeah and uh done some other things but nah we just used them to host a party and hopefully <laughs> yeah. rock y'all's faces yeah we our faces were melting um what was the first song you ever learned how to play on the guitar um that you remember the first song i ever learned how to play on guitar i guess would from i accomplished would be the from start to finish, just the um, just the A octave uh, in Jackson Five. I want you back. Oh, uh, okay. Start to finish, so I cheated that. Figured right. that one out quick, fast. Not that complicated of a song. No, but... none of the other parts, just that part. And then now, finish. were you singing on that song, or was there another song that you start to finish no. learned how to sing first? Uh, the first song I learned how to play and sing would have to be. Probably Stevie Ray Vaughan's Pride and Joy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Me and my friend Eve Monse, we signed up to play in a talent show. and um, In Austin. Yeah, in Austin in junior high school. Shout out Covington Middle School. And um, that was it. That was it. Pride that, and Joy. Not too hard. It's an E, right? It's an E. Yeah, but, you know, it's the changes. Well, I, I mean, the, forget yeah. about Stevie's riffs. I mean, we're not, we're talking, you know. We yeah. all know about that, yeah, right? No, we nobody attempted that solo. Right, yeah. Um and what was a song that, that you heard your parents play at first that really hit you right away? Maybe it was on the radio, maybe they were playing something on the stereo at home that sort of first like, Oh, was it the Jackson Five? Maybe it was Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um Oh Girl. Uh the Shylights, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. That one. Um, I think I'm getting that right. I hope I am. Was Curtis Mayfield played in your house? Curtis Mayfield was played all throughout my house. Yes. Ah. Um, but yeah, I remember being in the car and my dad listening to that and singing and tapping his hand, playing drums on the steering wheel. Yeah, yeah. And my mom telling him to knock it off. You know, it was that 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 song. But yeah, Curtis Mayfield, all that soul stuff. Their record collection was just. Right, yeah. Do they still have the vinyl? I have it. You have it. Yeah, oh, oh, man. I stole it. I stole oh, my man. Mom, every time I talk to my mom, she'd be like, I'm going to come get those records. I'll be like, okay. No, you're not. Because the reason I ask about Curtis is what you do vocally, your falsetto on songs like on the new album, I Walk Alone, Feed the Babies, Pearl mm. Cadillac, reminds me of Curtis. Is that sort of seeping into you from back in the day? Yeah, that just seemed like a normal way to sing to me. Um, that was... It, it just, I just kind of fall into it. I mean, one of my favorite singers, Smokey Robinson. Oh, yeah. I mean, Eddie Kendricks. Just all that was just, I just do it. I yeah. don't even think about it. Isn't it amazing that the, the recording technology back then on those records was so, for lack of a better word, antiquated to com- compared to what we have today, yet those records still sound amazing on the radio on your turntable. Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, people were like super talented and, 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 you know, you didn't have much, much time or tape. So you got to get it fast, be quick. Make right, it yeah, like great. a day. You, you got to make an album in a day and just get it done. And Yeah, I mean, I took my sweet time with mine. <laughs> I couldn't imagine having, you know, do all this to All tape. that time, right? You got yeah. three takes, you know. Um, and the reggae comes out on another song, Feeling Like a Million. Yeah. Um, punk Rock 2 on uh, <laughs> Gotta Get Into Something. 
And the reason I, I bring all these sort of elements up is it's amazing that on this album, you've covered so many genres of music, yet the fat, filthy Gary Clark Jr. guitar riffs are all throughout and present all of those songs, and, and, and it all works somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. We just, I came in with these ideas, and they felt like the strongest to me. I felt like this is what I'm, the, the vibe I'm in or the vibes that I'm in, and I just went with it. I didn't really ask any questions or think yeah. about it too much, or, or we're going to make a song like this, or. You know, let's do a punk thing or a genre, uh, a reggae thing or a soul. It just, this is what it felt like it should be. And just went in there and did it and put that fuzz guitar on it. And there you go. And uh, hip hop, obviously, uh, you've got some beats on these songs. And yeah. and I think your bio, it says something to the effect if, and I love this, and I, I would have loved to see this happen. <laughs> Dr. Dre producing Band of Gypsies is how your your album is sort of described when you get get into that hip hop sort of area. I never heard that, but I'm not mad at that. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. Um <laughs> and in that same area, Mike Elizondo on the album playing a lot of bass. Well then there's that part. Yeah. And he's got an incredible track record of hip hop as well as all genres of music. Yeah. So had you known him for a while or I met Ma uh Mike Elizondo. We did uh my first record together. We did black and blue together. We did um a few things. And um he came out when I first got uh, involved with the label and would come out to shows and we just would rap about music and all kinds of music from Miles Davis to, you know, what he did with Dre to, you know, anybody, Timo Walk, just his knowledge of music is so awesome. And, I, and so I really learned a lot from him. He's cool to be with, cool to hang with. So, uh, you know, it was kind of a no brainer to hit him. Yeah. Be like, hey, man, can you rock with me on this? One too? <laughs> and he's on like every song, right? Playing bass pretty much. I went in, <laughs> that was incredible. We went into the studio. I don't know if anybody filmed this. Maybe my boy guest on film this, but we went in the studio. This guy did like eight, nine songs in like a few hours and was like done. Just like that. It was out of there. Man. It made, me, it made me feel like, why did I take so long to bring this to you? Yeah, right, yeah. So he just got it right away. He, he just locked in and he knocked it out, man. Much respect for Mike Elizondo. He's the man. Um, Sheila E. Oof. Tell me about Sheila. How'd that happen? Uh, well, my boy Joseph, he was in the studio with me, me and Jacob. And Joseph was our, our team. And, uh, we were just sitting around. This, all, this, this whole thing started because I started off, I was going to, play every instrument i was like well i'll just knock it out this way you know diy yeah yeah you know and then um i did one take on drums for um uh uh uh, uh, uh what's the name of the song can't even think of the name of the song we call it um thermostat williams uh but so i was playing the I played this, the first drum take, and Jacob looks at me, and he goes, nah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's not happening. I love you, man, but no. Right. And so we started to get, you know, the people, and I brought in J.J. Johnson, who I worked with, Brandon Temple, you know, world-class musicians, drummers, and so we were like, all right, well, they came in and knocked it out. It's like, well, what else can we do? Let's get some percussion on it. So I go in, I start playing percussion. Nah, it ain't happening. <laughs> So we were just talking, you know, who can we get on here? Let's make it great. Who do we love? And we started pulling up Sheila E. And I was like, yeah, man, like that song and those rhythms are like the soundtrack to my upbringing. Right. You know, yeah. those grooves. I never heard anything like that until her. And I was like, okay. So we called up my manager, Scooter. He's like, yeah, I know her. I just saw her the other day or whatever, you know. Calls her up, show up to L.A., and she knocks it out. She, oh, when man. she came into the room, her presence and her energy was so inspiring, you know? Yeah. I guess we looked rough or something because she came in, and like, you boys need Jesus. And <laughs> <laughs> prayed with us, and we went in there, and she did some of the most magical musical stuff I've yeah. ever seen. Did and she bring, a, like, a ton of equipment in, or was it? She had some gear, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. It was cool, though. I mean, just amazing to uh, 
uh, your boy Doyle, Doyle Bramhall the second. He's on a track, right? Yeah, he was in town. He I didn't even know he was around, and um, I was at the studio, and he just popped up on me, and uh, he heard what we were doing, a little funky thing called "Did That." Yeah, and um. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, you want to play on something? He's like, yeah, I got an oud. I'll bring my oud tomorrow. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> cool. I mean, I don't know where that's going to fit or whatever, but, yeah, bring it. Let's mess around. And so he came in and on this session, and he laid down some cool oud, which is a nice approach. You know, you think Doyle, he can come in and play some monstrous, monstrous right. powerful guitar, and he right. just played this beautiful, you know, instrument. And, uh, wow. Gave it a cool vibe. That's cool. Um. Your manager, Scooter, sings background vocals on <laughs> Gotta Get Into Something. <laughs> he is credited on the album. He is. He got in there, man. We got a, we got a, a squad. Why am I not surprised at that? Because that's his thing. He loves punk rock, right? I, I mean, well, yeah. He, I I thought he would be a little bit more hesitant. And, um, I mean, I guess he proved me wrong, but he got in there and just hopped right up. Hell yeah, <laughs> get in there, I'll do it. And so, yeah, we had uh, you know, him. Other manager, Pam Adams, and a, a good crew from Village, you know, out in L.A. And we got in there and did it. It was fun. It was it's a like good Sympathy day. for the Devil when they had like 12 people on yeah. background vocals, right? Yeah, it was a great. It was great. Um, there's a credit on the album also, A&R by Lenny Warrenker. Uh, he's an industry legend, especially with Warner Brothers Records as an A&R guy and as a president. I mean, he signed huge artists back in the day, Prince being one of them. Um and speaking of Prince, you did get an invite to Paisley Park. Mm. But tell me what happened. I had just got back from tour, maybe being in Australia or being somewhere for a really, really long time. And uh, it was one of those things where I landed and was like, hey, he wants you to come to Paisley Park like today or tomorrow. And I was like, I got to be home. Be with family have been gone for a minute. I, Thank you, but I gotta I'm trying to chill you know, for a minute. I'm trying to balance it, you know. I've been gone. Let me put some time. Plus, in. your body clock is completely whacked out. I was all I wanted to do. All I wanted to do was just like sit down. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And uh, so I was like, "Can we do it later?" And didn't end up happening. Oh. But um, did you ever speak to him on the phone? I or? never spoke to him. Never met him. Oh no. boy. But um, but yes, I mean obviously a major influence right yeah. one of the best ever to do it and um you know going back to lenny uh he's a g and he some might say he knows what he's doing yeah yeah you know he knows what's up and uh so for him to you know even you know give me the time of day and also give me the you know, respect and and uh, time to to uh, I'll never perfect it, but work on my craft. You know, right. it's cool that he kind of sees that I know what I'm doing a little bit, and lets right. me just do that. It's that's uh, it takes a lot for somebody to let somebody do that in the business. I think. You know? Did he tell you some good stories? Um, he's told me a few stories, <laughs> but uh, he's got a lot of them, I'm sure. Man, it's yeah. He's I love hanging with him. Always a good time. We're with Gary Clark Jr. The new album is This Land. He's playing the Beacon Theater. Three shows, March 21st, 22nd, 23rd. And on tour across the country and the world. All the tour dates, GaryClarkJr.com. Um, a very powerful video for the song, This Land, and and powerful lyrics in that song. Talk about what inspired you to write this song. I think I might know, but I want to hear it from you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, this, um, <laughs> this land is... is Basically, it it this land is my perspective. I grew up in in Austin, Texas. It's, it's a great town. I love it. Um, but there were some instances where I found out the hard, rude way about life and race relations, the past. Um, I had a situation in my recently, not too recently, but in my adult life where uh, that came up in front of my kid and I had a confrontation with somebody. And um, 
at the end of it, my son was asking me, what was wrong? Why is he so angry? And uh, I didn't want to explain to him what it was and why he said things to me that made me feel a certain way. Because it shouldn't. You know what I mean? How old was your son at this point? Three. Three. So I didn't want to have to explain what happened to him. So I just said, oh, he's angry. He's having a bad day. But it made me super pissed off, you know. Um, I felt insulted and disrespected and, and, and threatened in front of my kid. And uh, so I was feeling some kind of way in the studio. It was right around the time of the election, 2017. So there was a lot of feeling in that, in that time. And I couldn't, I had the track for, for this land. Sorry if I'm being long-winded. No, but, no, I had, no. but I had the track for this land, and I didn't know what to do with it. And it was kind of menacing. And... I had this lyric in my head. I was thinking about, you know, the guys, you know, when I was in, when I was a young guy, you know, maybe nine years old, I remember these kids pulling up in a truck, you know, with Confederate flags, you know, screaming the N word at me. And I'm just a kid, you know. And I didn't like, it made me think of that going back to it, you know, in that moment. And what am I going to, What's my kid going to have to deal with? And why are we still dealing with these things? We're here. We're all here. We're trying to make it. We just want to support right. our families and provide the best lives we can for ourselves and help other people in the process mm -hmm. if we can. That's my MO, you know, and it feels like the right way to be. But unfortunately, that's not how it is all the time everywhere. And um, so I got in the studio and I had this lyric and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to lay it down. And I did. And Everybody in the booth, you know, Jacob and Joseph were like, whoa. And I was like, yeah, that's how I feel. That's how I felt. I'm fine. Cool. Next. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unapologetic, too. And that's what I love about that song, you know? Yeah. Well, he, um, there was some concern. He said to me, he's like, I don't like how you sound angry. I said, well, I am angry. I'm tired of, of, of feeling this way. You know, I don't want anybody to have to feel this way anymore. I'm, you know? Um. And it's enough already. I'm angry about it. You know, people have been complacent. We've been quiet. You know, otherwise we'd be punished for it terribly for speaking up. I have the right and the freedom to speak up because of the ones that came before me. So if I don't take this opportunity to shout it out, I'm pissed. I'm angry. I'm here. We are here. We're not going anywhere. You have to deal with us and everybody else. There are no segregated graveyards that I've ever seen in my life. So what are you going to do? Let's go. Yeah. It's time to go, people. It's interesting that Woody Guthrie, who wrote This Land is Your Land, mm -hmm. and he was considered a real rebel at the time, in the right. late 40s and the 50s. And it got to a point where I think people, kids were singing that song in high school, you know, or not high school, but like elementary yeah. school. This land is my land, this is your land, and everything like that. Of Did any of that Woody Guthrie sort of, elements seep into this at all of course i mean I, thinking about it the way that i came up with the song is i was listening to sharon jones and the dap kings and their version of that comes on which is one of the funkiest hardest groups ever i mean whew. yeah and um so i was like oh man i remember singing this song i remember singing this song holding hands as kids in the classroom and i pledge allegiance to the flag and doing this whole thing and putting our hands to our hearts and saluting the flag and we're all together, and then as you get older, it's like, whoa, it's not that way anymore. So the song starts to mean different things. The Woody Guthrie version, it, it meant something to me, and I was like, well, I don't know if it means the same thing to me now. It should. I think that was the point, but for some reason, it makes me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Kind of like the kneeling for the Star Spangled Banner. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I understand, but... Um, it's not really resonating with me right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So there's my version. <laughs> um, who are your top five guitar players of all time? Top ooh, of mind right now? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Like I'm, today, okay. right? Oh, rough today. Right today. Dead today. or alive. A dead okay. or alive. Okay, 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 okay. Um, I was recently listening to John Mayer Continuum, amazing album. I think he's great. I think that um, uh, Eric Gales is a beast. Uh, um... I always rock with Albert King. I will always rock with Jimi Hendrix. 
And just to throw it in there, I'm on my West Montgomery again. Gary Clark Jr. is his name. His new album is This Land. He'll be at the Beacon Theater in New York City. Three shows, March 21st, 22nd, 23rd, and he's touring across the country and the world. All the tour dates at GaryClarkJr.com. Again, congrats on making an awesome album. And uh, great to see you again. We'll, we'll see, see you. you at the Beacon. Yeah, that sounds good. I appreciate it always. This is Out of the Box with your host, Jonathan Clark. Out of the Box, Sunday nights at 9 on Q1043.